But for now, we will stick with the NFL and go to the, the situation with these quarterbacks. And, Rob, I want to read to you a tweet by Tom Pelissaro, who longtime uh, NFL writer, uh, now works for the NFL Network, does a great job of covering the league. He writes this, Rob, earlier today. Four quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson, Matt Stafford, and Derek Carr have signed contract extensions worth $40 million or more in the past month, and that's per year, as the market continues to go up. Kyler Murray is about to is due about $5.5 million in 2022. And it'd be a surprise if he plays on that deal. So, Rob, what I want to throw out to you, we kind of have two extremes here. Kyler Murray, I don't know. I mean, it, it, can you say threatening? Maybe it's gone a little too far, but maybe not. Threatening to hold out if he doesn't get his contract extension, the long-term deal he's looking for, even though the team's got him under contract for two more years and really doesn't have to pay him. And then on the other extreme, you've got Lamar Jackson in Baltimore who's completed four seasons, unlike Kyler, who's completed, completed three. And the Ravens ready to talk, ready to extend. And Lamar... Seemingly not that interested in it. Not doesn't have the sense of urgency about it. And Rob, I've seen some former players on television say they think Lamar is doing it the right way because look at how these contracts are blowing up and he's just playing it smart and he's going to make, you know, wait and wait and wait so he can make the most money. I don't agree with that logic. Number one, I don't think that's Lamar's plan. Maybe it is. I could be wrong. But I think he's just not really dealing with it. He's got this, I would say, erroneous notion that focusing on winning and putting all his effort into winning the Super Bowl would take away from doing this deal. I, I just don't get it. And the thing is this, Rob, the, the numbers, the, the money's going to keep increasing. Right. At some point, you got to sign. Right? Sh- show me when it's decreasing because it right. ain't decreasing. So when, you, when he signs... Let's say he signs this summer and after Deshaun Watson, so he gets $250 million guaranteed. I'm just throwing it out there, right? Because Deshaun got $230 million guaranteed. Right. And let's say Lamar got $250 million guaranteed, and we'd all be like, wow, that was awesome. A year or two later, somebody's trumping that. Right. There'll be somebody so, else, and it right. doesn't matter. We, we talked about this before when Matthew Stafford was the highest-paid player in the league. It was his turn, Chris. You remember? Yep. He hadn't won a playoff game. He hadn't done anything at that point. Yep. And he, it was his turn as a quarterback, and he got paid. And so Devontae it doesn't matter. Adams, right? The great deal. Who was it? Was it Tyreek? Who was it that came along right after Devontae became the highest paid player in the NFL right. <laughs> or highest paid receiver? And then they blew him out of the water right away, or, you know, uh, surpassed him. I'll say that way. It All they got to do is give the guy the a nickel more, and then right. you're, you know what I mean? Uh, you're the richest guy. Right. So, and that lasts for five minutes. What is your thought on this? Because, right? you know, the, about Kyler and uh, Lamar, I think they're both on the extremes, and there's a happy middle that neither of them has found yet. Well, I, I love all the pictures that they have floating around on, on uh, social media of Kyler in an Oakland A's uniform. <laughs> saying he'll, be playing, he'll be playing for the A's. You um, probably like, would you like to see him go to baseball? Nah, I mean, if he played, I wouldn't mind if he played both, if he could. You know what I mean? If there was a way, I, I don't think you could do it with a yeah, quarterback. A quarterback, yeah. But you know what I mean? I wouldn't have a problem seeing him play both if he could do it. When Dion did, it was exciting. But anyway, um, I don't know. I just think Kyler Murray is putting the cart before the horse. I, I don't know why he's freaking out. He will get paid. Um, you know, like if you wait another year, Chris, maybe you'll win a playoff game. Maybe your team will go to the uh, NFC Championship game. Do you know what I mean? Like, like there's a lot of other stuff that can happen between now and then. I don't know. Is he, is he worried about getting injured because he's always nicked up? 
and maybe things aren't going right. I don't I don't understand why this is like he's hell bent on getting paid right now. I, really, it, I don't. it seems to me, Rob, like that is a concern. That that to me, that's the only reason this early. And I get it. Jared Goff got the deal this early. Todd Gurley, a running back, got the deal this early. Those were mistakes. Those teams made mistakes. And teams aren't, you know, trying to go that route now. I'm not saying no one will ever get an extension after three years. But I remember when Goff, when they signed both of them, Goff and Gurley, I was like, why? Why this early? And Rob, the only the alternative for Kyler Murray is sitting out. Why? You're three years in? To your point, you haven't yet won a playoff game? You've been to the playoffs just once and you're sitting out? You had one winning season? Right. I, and you're I, sitting out? That makes me wonder if I'm another team, I'm wondering how much you really love this game. How committed you really are to this game. And so I'm with you. Like, I, I, I think he is putting the cart before the horse, to use your term. I think he needs to come out and play this year and play well and then, you know, maybe sign the extension after next season. But I do think he's concerned about getting hurt. And I get that. But, Rob, here's my answer. If the players are so upset with the system as it is, and the system as it is is that the team's got two more years of control over Kyler, Two more years. And, and we, if know, he's that and we upset, know the system ain't good, so we do right. know that, right. But what we're saying, and we've been saying it a while about the Players Association, fight it in collective bargaining. Fight for the right to make things more favorable for these younger players. But that's when the fight needs to play, take place. Right now, the rules are set. The rules are what they are. And so I think he needs to come back and play. And then on the other hand, though, Rob, I, I just think Lamar, I hope he's not making a mistake. But, you know, he's not a huge guy himself. And if he were to get hurt, seriously, he was hurt this year. Right. Missed a few games. Not too serious, but he missed several games. And they missed the playoffs. He's, his production's been a little down. It's still been good, but it's been down from what it was a few years ago when he won the MVP. Lock the money up now, especially now, Rob. Like, I get it. If he had signed a month and a half ago before Deshaun Watson, it would have been a great deal. But then when Deshaun comes along, you would have looked at it like, wow. Right. What did I do? He could have got more, right? But Deshaun's and, and already I got it now. You, it probably wouldn't have been fully guaranteed. You know what right. I mean? Like, like Deshaun had a franchise that was over the barrel, Chris, and they had no choice. They had to do something to make it. Remember, in order to get him to drop his no-trade clause, right? Remember, Cleveland, yep. he had to drop that. That, that right. was his bargaining chip. Right, right. No, they, 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 you know, they gave up a ton, but now is the time. And I hope, Rob, and I got to assume, we know Lamar doesn't have an agent. I hope he's got a lawyer that's working with his mom. And they should be talking. Uh, Lamar doesn't have to talk to the team. Lamar can go work out, get ready what for the you season, gotta do, do exactly. what he got to do. But have you a lawyer that you pay by the hour working with your mom and talking to the team and getting you that contract? And, and you are a unanimous MVP. You should have a contract. I mean, plain and simple. You should. Yep. Rob, he's done more. As, as much as everybody, including myself, likes Deshaun Watson, the player, Lamar's done more. No doubt. Deshaun Watson is 28 and 25 as a court, starting quarterback. I mean, that's not bad. And, and he was in Houston, so maybe cut him some slack for that. But still, he's not a unanimous MVP. He's not an MVP, period. Right. I don't know no, who's better, I would, you know, I, I mean, maybe, so I'm sure people like, a lot of people like uh, Deshaun better, he throws it better. Okay, that's fine. 
He's but, not but, as accomplished at this point as Lamar is. Right. Lamar, to win an MVP, Chris, when he did, what was that, his second year? Uh, it was like Patrick I think Mahomes. it was his third. I want to say third, but I'll look it up. But anyway, you know, to win an, an MVP no, it might that have been early. His second. It might have been his second. I want to say second. I don't know why I'm thinking. But anyway, my point is. Yeah, it was his second year. See? Second year in the league. A unanimous yep. MVP. Yep. Like you should be, You should be paid. For real. Especially since only three guys, right, have been unanimous, I think. Him, Brady, and somebody else. I think it's only been three times. It hasn't happened that often. No, it's, it's unbelievable. And he, he's doing himself a real disservice. And, and we just pray that he doesn't get hurt before he signs this deal. 